Hello, and welcome to Devereaux's Fireside Chat video series. This month, we're connecting with our executive directors. These are the leaders who manage our centers across the country. But in this episode, we're speaking with our executive directors in our New England states. So let's welcome President and CEO Carl Clark, Executive Director of our Massachusetts and Rhode Island Center, Nadia Abbas. Executive Director of Devereux, Connecticut, the Glen Home School, Dan Bailey. And Executive Director of our New York Center, John Lopez. Thank you all for being here today. Happy to be here. Thank, Thank you for having us. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. So to level set, I'd like each of our Executive Directors to provide a high level overview of your center. Where are you located? Who do you serve? How long have you been with Devereux? Nadia, let's start with you. Sounds good. So again, my name is Nadia Abbas and I'm the executive director of Devereux Massachusetts Center. Um, I started my career at Devereux um, as a direct care staff 22 years ago, and it's been a wonderful and fulfilling journey ever since. Um, at our Devereux Massachusetts and Rhode Island Center, we serve over 300 children, adolescents and adults. Um, through a variety of settings that include residential, group home care, foster care, and we also have two schools, one located on our campus and one located in the community. Most of the individuals in our care carry a diagnosis of autism, but we also have a few programs that specialize on supporting youth with mental health and behavioral health challenges. Thank you, Amy. Great. Thank you, Nadia. Dan. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Amy. Happy to be here. And um, I have the privilege of being the executive director up here in Devereux, Connecticut, um, the Glen Home School. So we service students between the ages of 10 years old all the way up through post-secondary. We have a transition program that goes all the way up to 22 years of age. Um, I've been with Devereux now for six years um, and in the uh, this current role as, as executive director for the last year. It's been a, a wonderful six years and I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, continuing on. Great. Thanks, Dan. John. Thanks, Amy. Appreciate it. Uh, so the New York Center is located in the scenic Hudson Valley of New York, and we are serving children as young as five years old uh, and through the lifespan in our adult programs. Uh, we have two school programs um, uh, along that uh, continuum, and uh, we serve uh, adults in our group home settings as well as day habilitation in four counties uh, in the Hudson Valley. Yeah. I've been with Devro now Going on 25 years, uh, started as a teacher when I originally joined, and I've been the executive director here now for the past nine years. Carl, how do you feel about this team and, and everything that they're doing to advance our mission? Uh, I feel really good. They're emblematic of our executive directors across the country. Right here in front of you, you have over 50 years of experience in operations and human services, and um, it's really a talented group. Um, not limited to the the three uh, to to Dan, Nadia, and John, obviously, but they they really exemplify the kind of leaders that we have available to us. So we're very fortunate to have that level of expertise. Thanks, Carl. So let's dive in. Uh, my first question is focused on the topic of belonging. At Devra, we are highly focused on providing a welcoming, supportive, and inclusive work environment for our team members and the individuals in our care. So how do you foster an environment where everyone feels like they belong? And Carl, I'm going to start with you. Well, we put a lot of emphasis on servant leadership in order to have a very much enhanced culture that we want to be the best uh, within the industry and attract and keep the best employees. And that's why we've invested so much in that sort of um, model because it works. It's used by Fortune 500 companies because it works. And we've uh, we've seen great benefits here at Devro because of it. Thanks, Carl. Dan. Yeah, absolutely. Um, piggybacking off of uh, Carl's mention of servant leadership, you know, we, we really strive here uh, as a top-down approach, making sure that our Executive leadership team really embodies belongingness, demonstrates to down throughout their entire team that everybody here on this campus has a sense of belonging. Um, you can find a place and a purpose within Devereaux, um, and we really want to make sure everyone truly believes that while they're here. Great. John. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, that, that sense of belonging really starts um, before day one uh, in the hiring and, and recruitment process, but 
But as soon as someone's joining us, we want to make sure that onboarding and orientation experience is a welcoming environment. Uh, and similarly, we're doing that with families as well um, as they're considering us for placement and that referral process, um, but also you know, building those relationships with uh, school districts and, and referral sources so that they're ensuring that uh, they're also portraying that welcoming environment uh, on behalf of Devereaux too. Thanks, John. Nadia. Servant leadership is important at our center and we use the seven pillars to establish behavioral expectations uh, for ourselves and all of our staff. And we hold ourselves accountable to that. Additionally, as part of our DEIB, which is diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging initiative, we make it a point to learn about and celebrate all levels of diversity at our center. Thanks, Nadia, and thanks everyone for sharing. You know, as we talk about belonging for our individuals and our staff, it's also important that our families feel like they're part of that overarching mm -hmm. Devereaux family. John, starting with you, you know, it has to be so incredibly difficult for a parent to place a loved one in our care. How do you and your team engage with our families and caregivers so they feel like Devereaux is a true extension of their own family? Yeah, that is a difficult position for families to be in when they have to, you know, trust in someone else to take care of their loved one. And, um, you know, at, at times a quite distance, you know, quite a distance from where they live. Uh, and so that's not an easy decision for, for anyone to take. And yeah, as we were saying before, this really is, you know, encompassed in our, our culture and, um, you know, that welcoming environment. We want to make sure that that uh, conveys a sense of trust to these families. Uh, and it really starts day one and, and how we're building that relationship with them. Um, you know, we want to be sensitive to that uh, challenge that comes with that decision. Um, but we also, you know, need to recognize we're not always going to have that lived experience necessarily. Um, so at times we'll also bring in families who are with us currently and, and have gone through that journey and can kind of relate and, and give some advice to those families and support them in that, that process. At our center, we... We feel like our job is to engage the families in helping them create a new normal um, while their child is temporarily in our care, um, ensuring that the family can continue to participate and enjoy the positive experiences, the healthy experiences, in spite of the fact that their child may not be in their home environment. So meaning that if, um, as a parent, you've always read to your child at bedtime, that doesn't have to stop just because they're in our care. They, the families, we make it a point to invite the families into our care so they can do those things. And if distance is a barrier, then we work on creative solutions, such as ensuring that um, we can do that virtually or remotely to make that to that happen. Nadia, I couldn't agree more. I, I think you you really mentioned it on a piece here that we we hit on heavy up here in Connecticut, which is individualized treatment approach for not only the the student in our care, but the family members as well. Um, understanding that they've been on this journey just as much as the child, um, if not more at some points, right? Really uh, being their advocate through and through throughout their entire life, some of them, um, and really making sure that we're trusting, uh, we're empathetic, but also transparent, being there for the families and whatever they need. So we really try to individualize that approach for every single family that comes through here. Um, at the Glen Home School, making sure that that journey um, is is individualized so they understand that it's it's unique to them and their family. You're really hearing an articulation of what is known and codified as Devereaux's family standard, which simply put is our programs have the quality and the type of professionalism that you would be comfortable leaving your family member, your loved ones in the care of Devereaux. And that is actually buttressed by the fact that our bylaws require over 30% of our trustees are, have family members served by Devro or have lived experience themselves. And that makes it um, very much a real expectation and standard that everyone throughout the organization knows. And we're constantly striving to exceed that family standard. Absolutely. Our families are everything. And, and so, Moving on, and for all those watching, Devereaux is really a place of powerful moments. And so starting with Nadia, tell us about one of the last times you were inspired by our individuals or our employees or both. 
Gosh, I mean, I have so many examples to choose from, but um, the one that stands out the most for me is of a student that I had a chance to actually observe um, over a number of um, dates, starting from the beginning of the school year at CARES, which focuses on supporting our youth with moderate to severe autism. And this particular student, um, he's nonverbal, and so he requires um, communication device to be able to communicate. And He's not a fan of the communication device by any means, nor is he a fan of um, any academic demands that are placed on him. So every time something would be asked of him in September, he would just walk right out of the classroom. And although I've had opportunities to observe him, it wasn't um, until just a few weeks ago, it became really pronounced about the gains that he's made. Um, I saw him in the classroom and I said, oh, hi. And um, he didn't seem to respond. And so I was about to turn away, but his one-to-one -one staff said, hold up, hold up. And um, he pressed on his um, device and he was able to say, hi, how are you? And I was like, wow, that was amazing. But more than that, he then stood up and um, was about to walk out of the classroom. I thought, okay, we're still working on the out of, out of area behaviors. Um, but the one-to-one -one staff said to him, you know, hold up a second. Are you for, aren't you forgetting something? And so much like any other uh, team, he begrudgingly turned around and got his device and pressed um, his icons. And he said, it's time for us to work. And the one-to-one -one staff said, you're absolutely right. It is. And they went off and um, God, I feel a little emotional even talking about it. It was a really incredible moment to see that this youth who couldn't sit still in the classroom for even five minutes was not just able to use his device, communicate, and also um, be able to engage in these meaningful activities. Um, and it truly was an example of the work that was done by the entire CARES team. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy to share that with you. Thank you so much, Nadia. Dan, how about you? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, uh, I spend a lot of my time pausing and reflecting back on the work that we do. Um, as Nadia mentioned, it's the, the list is as endless, truly, and I think that is what keeps us all coming back every day is the lives that we touch. Um, the list is very long, um, and that's great. And I think in specifically looking at, you know, to answer your question, Amy, um, I worked very closely with a, a gentleman who came to us um, and was a day student. He traveled, and this is an important information, he, he traveled for an hour uh, both ways on the bus, um, coming from a pretty rough neighborhood. And he did a lot of trust issues with adults over the years. And so he would come to us and he, he refused to engage and speak with, with staff for a long period of time. Um, so much so that he would just walk around with his hoodie over his head, um, not wanting to talk. And as he described to me, that's a safe space. Um, and we worked with this, this gentleman for a long time. And um, I'll fast forward to the end here where he ends up getting an academic award from a number of his teachers. Um, and as part of that goes up on stage and um, he stood up in front of the entire group, which in the past he wouldn't have felt comfortable to do. But not only did he do that, but he took his hoodie off, put on a jacket, a blazer and a tie and stood up there proudly smiling alongside myself and other staff members. Um, and afterwards, his grandmother pulled me aside and said, you know, I can't put into words um, the impact you've had on my grandson's life. And it's things like that, that, um, that are truly, you leave you speechless, you know, um, little, little pieces of work throughout the day that lead to a kid's confidence, um, and now going on and, uh, hopefully having a career. So yeah, that's, uh, that's my story there, Amy. Oh my gosh. Wow. John, how about you? Those inspirational, what was your last inspirational moment? Yeah. I mean, it, it really are those moments that, you know, um, keep us going and uh, drive us in what we do. And, and I look back, uh, we had a child um, uh, on our campus, you know, several decades ago, and he's, he's been with us uh, and is still with us as, as an adult. Um, and, you know, I, I worked with him in various capacities over the years, uh, certainly in the school and doing job training and coaching. Um, and now at this point, you know, he's an employee of Devereaux, works in our food service department. Uh, he lives in an apartment uh, and, and we provide supports to him uh, in that setting as well. Um, but he really, you know, has a sense of belonging. He's, he's proud of what he's accomplished. He's proud of, you know, what Devereaux has done for him uh, and is confident in sharing that, loves to be an ambassador 
uh, for the work we do and, and what he's done over the years. Um, you know, we certainly uh, involve him on tours and try to make sure we, we bring guests his way because he, he just is passionate about that and, and really uh, uh, enjoy sharing that. And just recently we had an event uh, for our children and adult programs uh, and I heard a story. He was there and one of our um, current children that we're serving, um, you know, has been having some challenges and, and frustrations. And, and he was there just kind of saying, hey, look, you know, that was me. Um, and, and here I am now and what I've accomplished. And, you know, this is these are the things you got to think about. And, you know, if you work hard, you can get here, too. And that kind of, you know, big brotherly speech. Uh, to, to someone in this program and just, um, uh, you know, a testament to, to what we do and everyone that's been involved in his life over the years. Yes. Yeah, so interesting. You just hear three vignettes that really outline meaningful moments. And, you know, it's a special when someone comes to you and say, you know, Deborah saved my life or saved the life of my child. And that that's happened multiple times. And we have so many points of success, so many points of brightness where we really did in some small way help unlock their own potential and they soared and have achieved so much. So that's really gratifying. And it's a tribute to the leadership uh, and the leaders you hear talking today about what they fostered in their own centers. Thanks so much, Carl. And thanks to all of our executive directors for sharing these amazing stories. They are truly perfect examples of the impact that our employees make every day on our campuses. If you want a career where you can make a powerful and positive impact in the lives of others and work in an environment where everyone belongs and everyone is empowered to reach their personal and professional goals, you need to join the Devro team. You belong here because this is your community. So look for us online at jobs.devereaux.org. Thanks and have a great day.